Hey guys, Icebreaker back. Today I am on my 5-5 five five account. So we've got 5 gumbo energy and 5 troop damage statues. And I was full boost for the attack on Waterloo. I'm going to show you how to uh, crack the magic path as it's known. This one isn't exactly a typical nail but it's very very similar so um but the path the actual path itself is exactly the same every time so differences on this one is we've got an extra rocket launcher here that isn't normally there the three boom cannons here are normally mortars um but they are here this time uh, this mortar here on the corner is normally a rocket launcher these two cannons are shock launchers and these two rocket launchers here aren't normally there um, like I said, I'm going to show you the magic path which is the one where people walk in between the mines without actually hitting any um, first thing you need to know on this one is there are a couple of mines you do need to clear and you need to check this one that's hidden behind core there um, on this one it was a level 23 so it had to be cleared um, sometimes it's lower than that and it doesn't need to be. <clears throat> Next ones you need to clear are the two here, the three here, and these two. Um, you also need to check this one as well. Um, it can be a high level mine which will take you out if you don't have a troop health statue. Um, if it's if it's not at level 21, 22, 23, then you can leave it there like I do in this attack and it won't matter if you hit it. So to start off with, <coughs> we'll um, clear the mines. So the one behind core, two on the corner, three to the left of the cannon, a couple of boom mines. Now, the trick to the magic path is it's all about your timing of your flares. So, first of all, things we're going to do is, is we're going to drop all of our flags here on the top left corner of the beach, right next to that cell. We're going to use as an anchor point to stop the Zookas running off while they all gather up underneath the smoke. Like so. So while they're all gathering up there like that, what you need to do is, is when you get down to the last few Zookas entering that smoke, you need to come over to this shock launcher just here. Now I'm going to highlight the zone here so you can see where the flare point is. Uh, it's in between the cells there and the shock launcher. Um, this flare needs to be on that spot and not flaring any of the defenses or the cells nearby because if you do your zookas are going to run off in all different directions and die so that flare there is is key has to be exactly on that spot there which is highlighted as you can see you can see the tap and there's the flare now they'll path around those two cells they will split around the next one. They sort of take a weird moment, sort of as the path moves over and straightens out. Uh, as you can see, it hit the mine. As I said, it was a level 20, so I didn't need to clear it. And the Zookas have all survived that, so that's, that's okay. Now, the next bit is sort of the key to this attack. Timing the top flare is absolutely everything in this attack. As you can see here, the, um, the smoke's about to land for brick on the flare point. Now what we need to do is, is, is watch the Zookas. And as they start arriving on this flare point, we need to send the kill zone flare, which I'll show you in a second. Um, if you let the Zookas all reach this flare, they'll all stop. And they'll spread out around the shot launcher and the cells. And then when you flare the kill zone, the last flare point... They'll all take different paths and they'll hit mines and they'll peak and they'll die. So the trick is this this hit needs to be really fluid. Never let the Zookas stop. As soon as the sort of first two or three Zookas reach the flare, you need to tap the kill zone flare. 
so that by the time the flare lands at the kill zone, the last couple of Zookas are just reaching the flare, and they'll all move off together in a nice neat path. So, the kill zone flare is to the left of this rocket launcher, and just to the top of, just behind this mortar. Now, it has to be exactly there, it has to be tight to the edge, um, if it's not tight to the edge there, what will happen is, as they come around the corner here, they'll split around this sniper and hit these mines. By having the flare exactly you know, as tight to the edge as you can get it, <clears throat> what will happen is they'll come around the corner and they'll go down the left side of this sniper, down the left side of this mortar, like staying away from the mines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and put it on half times. Um, the next thing you'll see on the screen is the smoke will land on the first flare site and brick will move into it with the first couple of zookas and you'll see the tap on the kill zone and the flare going out to the kill zone for that flare point. So there's the smoke. Now, as you can see, They've literally just starting to arrive into there. The flare zone flare, the kill zone flare has been sent. So that as they just arrive in that smoke, the flare has literally just landed there tight to the edge of the map. This means when they walk off, they'll be in a nice tight group rather than in two or three different lines taking different paths. So now you can smoke them up through the, through the middle there. They'll miss all the mines. Brick will get out in front a little bit, which isn't a big deal. A couple of smokes there at the end for the spread. Now, once they get up to the up to the top flare, they've missed all the mines. They've taken the right path. You can see now that the smoke timers are almost up. And the Zookas are almost in position, so we're going to send the flare now. So that by the time the flare lands, the Zookas will be in the right position. And we'll be ready to start sending shocks. So there's the flare on the core. There it is landing. And as you can see, the smoke timers are pretty much done. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the shocks straight away. We're not going to wait for the Zookas to settle. We're going to send the shocks um, as soon as possible because obviously it's a, it's a long distance between the gunboat as you can see the first shock there is already on the way um, it's long distance between the gunboat and the shock points which means they take a while a second or two to land so there's the first shock point this time it's on that sniper tower uh, normally it's a machine gun and the idea is to catch the machine gun and the two top Rocket launch is there. This one you'll be in the in the dead zone for, so it doesn't matter if that one doesn't get shocked. Um, the next one would be the mortars, which are normally where the boom cannons are, so that's normally where that shock is normally. And then the next one is on those mortars. And the last one is on these rocket launchers here. Like I said before, this mortar here is normally a rocket launcher as well, so that shock would need to cover cover all three rocket launchers. Um, the extra rocket launcher here that I said to you was out of range um, of most of the girls, it is. But as you can see, there's just one or two there that are in, in range of it, so it will get a shot off. Um, when I did this attack, we had uh, the remote hack gunboat ability. So that's what I use to to deal with it, rather than using another shock on it. You can see it does get one one shot off before the thing lands, but it doesn't cost us the attack. Now, as the core health is getting nice and low, you can see this shock timer here on the right is about to expire. So if you had more energy for another shock, you want to repeat that shot right now. If you needed to, if the core health was high enough that you needed that extra couple of seconds to get one more volley off for the solo, you'd have to send that shock about now. 
So you can see the core's gone down, and that is the, water, the Magic Path Waterloo solo. Hope it's helped explain it, guys. The, the main thing to take away from the video is the timing of the flares. Timing of the flares and the flare points need to be that you know perfect for it to work. Um, but once you once you master that, it's it's repetition. It becomes quite easy, and it looks really good. Hope that's helped, guys. If you've um, found this helpful, give us a like. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, and we'll catch you next time for the next one. Cheers.